All right, guys, I had some questions on a video I did a while back ago on brazing in a 20-inch aluminum rim that was on my truck. I was using these Hobart 8th-inch aluminum brazing rods. I am, in hindsight, maybe a little disappointed in Hobart. They are a good quality name. I've got one of their welders. Uh, but they don't really list real good specs on this as to what its strength is and, and any other real strength specifications and I've looked online I can't find anything either before I did that braze I did have some scrap aluminum around to where I actually tried to braze a couple small pieces together to make sure that I was comfortable with the rod and brazing it in and uh, it did pretty well I think I broke one of those I didn't really pay much attention it seemed like it had plenty of strength I don't have a way to test strength <clears throat> but it looked it seemed like it held real well so I went ahead and brazed that rim up. I've had some comments on that this isn't actually brazing, it's soldering. Technically, I think they're probably right. It is at a transition temperature. The 700 degree temperature is right, technically under brazing temperature. I think brazing is 800 and something F. So these aren't quite brazing. They're technically a high temp solder. But uh, So I decided I would braze up, solder up a couple more samples and I'll beat them and break them in half. And mainly I'm just looking for how it breaks. I don't want it to just peel away from the material like it didn't stick. I'm looking for it to actually break itself or break the base aluminum. And I'll show you those results. All right, now I've cut two pieces of aluminum, clamped them together, prepped the joint in the middle, and we're gonna weld them with a Hobart rod and then see where we can break it. All right, guys, here's my finished piece. I took it to the bandsaw, cut a little bit out of the top, a little bit out of the bottom. That way the end of my joint isn't gonna mess things up. Ground it pretty smooth, wire wheeled it. And I'm not gonna be super scientific. I'm just gonna put it in the vise, hit this in with a hammer. I want to see if it fails in the welded or brazed or soldered area or if it fails closer into the parent material. All right, the weld is right there where my finger is. And then I'll hit it right out here where this is. Good and solid. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, break. I don't know if you can see. Oh, goodness. Go close to the weld. It's hard to tell. Yep, see, I had an actual low spot in here. So when I was bending it, I did have the that little underfill portion. It was on the bottom side, so... It failed through the soldered material. And as you can see, it took quite a bend before it did that. This is not by any, by any means highly inferior.
let it cool. All right, test piece number two, as welded. No weld on the back side. Let's see. I'll put it on the side, easier for me to hit. Yeah. Where'd my hammer go? There it is, on the floor. Something tells me this one ain't gonna be as strong. see it's actually folding the parent material the weld is holding <clears throat> for now now this is more bending it so as it's folded up it's actually trying I'm actually trying to break the piece in half so it's not really trying to pull the joint as much as it is trying to just break it. So. <laughs> Let's see here. That'll show up real well. It's starting to crack right through there. Where it basically started to bend it over backwards. And broke it. I think the key is... Make sure I'm in the view screen here. is that the break actually didn't occur where the joint was prepped, which would be, my gloves are on, basically right on that edge. This is my pointer. So basically the joint prep line is right here. And the failure happened right over here. So you can see it right there too. That screen turned off. Joint prep line right there. It actually failed in the material of the rod. Which from what I've looked at in the specs, these are, these do end up actually being pretty hard. The material, the as deposited material is harder than the, the base material usually. Has a little higher hardness. It's a little more brittle.
All right, guys, I hope this is coming in on the camera. I'm not gonna grind back the whole length of this braze or solder joint, whatever you wanna call it. It doesn't look the best there in the world, but you can see right there, hopefully it comes through on the camera, that it made a good connection. And this side might even show up a little better. So the connection's there. The key is when I try to break it, will it break? Will the braze slash solder just peel away from the aluminum or will it break down the aluminum or the braze slash solder? I'm gonna bet. Make sure we get a good hold on this thing. Let's see, we will clean that edge. Now, if this were a real test in a lab, this thing would be ground flush, or at least the edges would, because that weld discontinuity, or it looks like a weld because it's bubbled up, but it's a braze. That braze, that dis geometric discontinuity can't affect the strength test, so you try to get rid of those. So you can just see the thickness of the aluminum, the thickness of the braze, the thickness of the aluminum being the same across. I'm sort of wanting to see where this crack will initiate. I got something. See right there, it's looks like it might be going down through the middle. Give it another hit. It bent it over pretty good. I'm not hitting it good and square. As you can see, I am folding this piece of aluminum up. There we go. Hard and sharp. What do we got? Okay. So the last braze didn't take very well. The first one didn't either. You can see some stuff in the middle. All right, guys, what are my key takeaways on these aluminum brazing rods from Hobart? Technically, they're a high temperature solder. I don't think they technically cross the threshold to be brazing. They're probably 100 or 150 degrees short of that. I brazed up a couple pieces, soldered up a couple pieces, whatever you want to say. I would say the way I'm testing it, I don't know that a actually welded piece of aluminum would do, it probably would do better. I think if it was TIG welded, I don't think it would be quite as brittle. Uh, these are, they do like to be clean, just like your TIG welding aluminum. TIG welded aluminum likes to be really clean. You don't want to use anything that you've used to clean steel with when you're cleaning that aluminum. So I use this carbide burr on this drill because it only has ground aluminum. I did do a piece where I ground it on the bench vise before I brazed it, and it didn't do very well. It didn't seem like it could adhere to that base aluminum. So clean it with something that you only has never cleaned any other metal other than aluminum. It does like to be very clean, just like TIG welding. Uh, this was one of my first pieces, and then I did grind this piece. My grinding wheel probably hates me now, but... Uh, you can see it broke real jagged. It didn't just delaminate from the base material. It broke, and actually when I flipped it to rebraze it, this was on the bottom, so it did develop a pocket. So it, it lost a little bit of strength there, but really what I was curious about is where it broke, not how much strength it had. Because <clears throat> the key is I want it to break through its own self 
not just tear away from the base material or break the base material. Either one would have been acceptable. So uh, it's got good adhesion to the base material. And as you can see also, it, it takes a pretty good beating. I mean, this base material bent up pretty good before this weld finally, excuse me, before this braze finally let go. This is another piece, pretty jagged edges. It didn't really hold to the base, or it didn't pull away from the base material. It had good adhesion to the base material and broke. Close to this base material seam, but not exactly on it. It might have pulled away from the base material in just a couple places, <clears throat> but uh, as you can see, the, the base material took a, a heck of a beating to get there. So It doesn't, like any weld, it wouldn't like to be bent like this. So This was maybe my worst performing piece. It didn't do real good. It seemed like it didn't adhere to the base material great right there. And then the backside got a little thick. So, but it too started to bend the base material before it finally broke. See that, that piece of base material has got a pretty good bend in it going this way now. So, it is pretty stout. I don't know that it's as stout as the Aluma weld, which I think they rate that at 33 to 34, or 33 to 40,000 PSI. This here, it, it's hard, it's kind of brittle. It definitely grinds harder than the base material, so it's definitely got a lot more hardness, which usually harder stuff is more brittle. So it probably doesn't like this shock loading I'm doing with the hammer. So, uh, if I had a tensile testing machine, kind of like Project Farm did some testing on these, and the, Harp, the Hobart did pretty good in that. I think if you actually were pulling it apart slowly without the shock, it would have pretty high strength because that shock is brittle material doesn't like that shock because it definitely started to crack it initiated the crack right there and it sort of worked its way down through the material so what are my key takeaways on this i guess is or what's my final thoughts for what i used it for on brazing up a rim i don't recommend everybody do that uh I actually welded a couple other samples, as I said, one that I didn't clean very well, it didn't do real good. Uh, I had another sample that I kind of, let's see, uh, this sample too, this bigger sample, I just did a little bit of, I hit it with this carbide burr, just a little bit, I didn't really clean up the material much. So this was kind of a quick prep too, so the more prep, the better the weld. And when I did that rim, if you watch that video, I prepped that rim pretty good because I knew I wanted that would be a one and done kind of deal. I didn't want to have to go back in and do that. So more prep, the better. It is sensitive to how good you prep it, that is, and how good of a, a well, a, a braze you can put in there. So I wouldn't recommend it for everybody because it, if you don't put in a very good braze and you don't get it wetted in real well and you don't get it real clean, it's not going to hold very well. So it's, it's definitely very operator dependent or brazer dependent. And uh, it is a little bit brittle. I'm not too worried about it on like a cast rim because a cast rim is pretty brittle in itself. So as far as the rim, I would say this material is probably comparable to that rim. So you have to sort of, well, like anything, you gotta pick and choose if it's gonna work for you and your application. Not everything is a, a blanket, works great. It's not as good as TIG welding. Uh, somebody been commenting on that RAM video I did uh, that sort of prompted me to do these about how that RAM should have been TIG welded. That RAM had been TIG welded before and it had recracked. Uh, one thing about TIG welding is uh, You've got that electric arc that's creating a lot of heat. And if you're not careful, let's see, I think I've got a couple pieces around here somewhere. You can damage the base material even with a, a propane torch. 
I thought I had a couple of pieces around here. I actually did. I was trying to heat it from the bottom and I wasn't paying good enough attention. And I actually over overheated the base material. And actually you can see here, these two pieces of base material are a little bit different in color. I almost got this base material too hot as well. So what'll happen is when that base material gets too hot, I mean, you're pouring an electric arc into that base material that's well over the melting temperature of the base material. What'll happen is you'll actually weaken the base material on either side of your weld and create a weakness. It's pretty finicky, aluminum can be, when it comes to long-term durability. Now, short-term, I weld it, I try to pull it apart, it's gonna be pretty stout, but that long-term durability can be degraded when you weld something. So every process has its advantages and disadvantages. The, the advantage of brazing is your slower heating, longer, or uh, you're not reaching that melting point of the base material either. So ideally you're not going to weaken it. That big rim dissipated heat so easily and so fast it was hard to even get it up to brazing temperature. So I know I didn't overheat the base material on it. So uh, this little stuff here picks up heat quick it can overheat quick too, so you gotta watch it on smaller pieces. Even with a propane torch, you can overheat the base material. And I'm just using some cheap propane cylinders I got from the farm store. But that'll, if you're not careful, that'll cook a piece of aluminum. <clears throat> so, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned a little bit. Hope you can uh, use it and help you make a better judgment on your project. Thanks for watching. If you like, give us a thumbs up, helps the channel out. Consider subscribing. Thank you. There's that piece of aluminum I, I scorched. Again, I was heating it from underneath. So gravity was trying to work the puddle down. And you can see it just a uh, bunch of that material started melting away, creating a big old bubble. So yeah, that, that base material there is never gonna be any good. So you'd have to probably cut it off right here and start over. So, uh, yep, got to be careful even with a torch.